Johnny Rowland, your host of The Shooting Show. We certainly want to welcome you to today's program. You'll recognize my lovely wife, Heather. And friends, as we predicted this past week, look out, here it comes. You have uh, the anti-gun people are going to town. They're trying to say that, uh, back on semi-automatics actually, they're really upset because some of us have these 20 and 30 round magazines like for this AR-15, but let me tell you what, friends. This is a model of a 1917 Enfield. And they came with 10 round magazines. This one's a little different. We'll talk about a little later in the program today. But, you know, uh, guns have been around since the mid 1800s uh, that carried 10, 12, even 16, 17 rounds in the gun. What is their problem? We understand what the problem is. But right now, we're seeing a whole new uh, gathering of anti gun attacks on us as gun owners. Now look, it's coming. For example, put this gun down. In the newspaper uh, today here in Louisiana, we have a picture here of none other than Diane Feinstein with an AK-47, which none of us had AK-47s. We had MAK-90s. What does she know about AK-47s? Well, I tell you what, here's most importantly what she wants, uh, what she does know is she knows she doesn't want us to have repeating firearms or firearms of any kind. But Ms. Feinstein there, the uh, illustrious senator from California, uh, was instrumental in getting the uh, magazine bans, higher capacity magazines. See, we can't buy a new gun with a new magazine mm -hmm. of over 10 rounds. And that's just a stopping point, friends. That was only a rest stop for them. What they did was they wanted us to get used to a limited magazine capacity, so then they're going to come back and say, hey, well, you know, 10 is too many. How about two or three or four brick or by, one? Brick by brick. Brick, brick by brick by brick. Now, friends, you know, we are indeed very sorry for what happened in Jonesboro, Arkansas. You know, but in order to control everybody all the time, you're going to have to lock everybody up, put a chain, around them. Uh, uh, you're going to have to put them in solitary confinement if you want the ultimate control. And they will do that if they take away our weapons. Well, well said, dear, because this is what the New World Order That's people exactly what have want. in mind. This is what they want. Now, you know, last week in Jonesboro, Arkansas, there were five people, innocent people, that were brutally murdered by a 13-year-old boy with his accomplice who's 11 Hey, you know, and we're going to go about setting, well, uh, what caused this? Uh, were they mistreated by their parents or whatever else? Or we need to understand, hey, friends, you cannot understand some brutality. There is no explanation, none whatsoever for what those ignorant little kids did. You know, there are bad children. There are people that make horrible mistakes. And, you know, we just have to deal with that. We have to realize there is always going to be someone out there, there's always going to be somebody who will do something terrible at some point. But, you know, in order to stop any possible uh, incident like that, you're going to have to lock everybody up. And these people want, all right, we lost five people, innocent people at that school. But you know what, friends, at the same time during last week, do you know that guns were used 50,000 times last week, mostly without ever being fired, they were used 50,000 times to stop crime and protect their owners. That's right. I'm sorry we lost five. I'm sorry about that. But at the same time, people who used firearms properly, 50,000 per week is how often guns are used over two and a half million times a year to stop crime, to preserve their safety, to stop a brutal incident, to stop someone from being killed 50,000 times last week and again this week and it'll be again next week. Ms. Feinstein and her New World Order crowd want to take any means that we as individuals have to protect ourselves. They want to take it away from us. You know, if Heather here, who's a normal-sized woman, 5'4", a normal-sized person, what's she going to do against she runs into someone, say, my size, who's much larger, 
or maybe someone her own size who's crazed on drugs or has a knife or even a gun, what's she going to do if they take her gun away? She's going to have to run for it, friends. Uh, a whole lot of you other ladies out there, what are you going to do? What about the disabled people who are every bit as important as anybody else in our society That's right. when they cannot run, they can't escape a criminal, and who do the criminals pick on? They don't pick on me. They pick on the people that are vulnerable. That's right. And trust me on this one, when they're looking down the barrel of a 44 Magnum, they, their whole demeanor changes. Everything changes. Isn't it amazing how Everything nice changes. they become? So the people who cannot defend themselves, it makes everybody equal. The welfare state cannot make anybody equal. It can only spread the misery. That's right. But as it was said back in the 1800s, God made people, Colonel Colt made them equal because literally it took the size factor out of it. It took the, the advantage of some sort of physical uh, a large S or something or a physical skill out. It made everybody capable of defending themselves, being on an equal footing with someone else no matter what their their knife fighting skill or no matter what their physical size or what their armament, at least it, it levels the playing field. And you know what? When the criminal runs in, just like the story I told last week, when, when me and that nightclub manager were mm -hmm. standing against the two guys from the gang, well, wait a minute, that was even odds. Mm -hmm. It was two of them, two of us. What they do? They ran. That's the criminal mentality. Yep. But you know what? If there had been... Uh, of course, they came back with seven uh, to work on us, too. But see, that was the odds were... That's also the criminal mentality. That's also the criminal mentality. They, who do the criminals pick on, friends? They pick on women. They pick on children. They pick on older people. And yes, they will pick on handicapped and disabled people. They darn sure will, only if they get a chance. That's and how banning guns is, is criminal to, to take the guns away from us. And in, it still arms the criminal. That's right. I think that these people like Diane Feinstein... I think that she should be brought up on criminal charges for trying to destroy our Second Amendment rights. Do you know right now, our State Department, our own State Department, our Department of Justice here in the United States, their official line is that we, they do not believe that we as individuals have a right to own firearms. It's another case of changing the language changing it say well that's what it said but it didn't mean that of course it meant that you know somewhere 200 years ago it was written that water is wet and they're saying no it didn't really mean that yeah they're saying that we as individual citizens and friends they are wrong they're liars and they should be brought up on criminal charges you know we can do this peacefully we can turn this train wreck around but it's going to take all of us doing it now friends we have been here all this time Almost all the time, our programs run at a loss. And thanks to you, good people out there, you have helped us stay on the air. You know, I hate to ask for help. That's been something that has galled me from the time we've had to do it. But we have to have your help if you want, if you want gun TV with the truth about firearms. And unfortunately, and I'm sorry about this, you cannot get the truth about what's happening with guns with our legislation, you can't get it anywhere else on television. I'm sorry about that. I wish there were more places. I wish there were more people who had the courage to stand up and tell the truth. I wish we did. Maybe we will later on. Maybe we will. Right now, we don't. Not right now. The gun-owning organizations, the NRA, they're fighting among themselves, and I hope they get it worked out. I really hope they do. A lot of these folks who we'd think would come in and help, they, you know, they're too busy uh, catching their own fish. I don't know what they're, you know, I don't know. Well, but they're making enough, hap enough money, so they're happy. Woo, well, uh, that could be the case. That's right. You know, uh, some of those folks in those, uh, in those organizations that have those cushy jobs uh, and have those expense accounts, it's like, well, uh, let's just compromise away. Don't worry about nothing. Well, hey, we shouldn't have to compromise our gun rights. We shouldn't have to compromise our freedom of speech. We shouldn't have to compromise the other things that were granted in the Constitution and in the Bill of Rights. We shouldn't have to, friends. If you want to see us stay on the air, if you want to see us continue, please, from the comfort of your own home, please, please send whatever you can to the shooting show, 327 Irvin Roland Road in Dubberly, Louisiana. The zip code is 71024. Please, friends. 
we are struggling. We have hopes, uh, some light in the tunnel, but it's not here now. And if we can't stay on the air, it'll never get here. So please, whatever you can do. And yeah, it does gall me having to ask for help, but doggone yeah, no, it, we have to. We can't do it by ourselves. We don't have an expense account. We have expenses every <laughs> week for editing this show and for putting it on the air. It runs into it is a very lot of expensive. Money. Yes, it is very expensive. And please, friends, uh, our sponsors that you see on the program, please support them because they're trying to. They believe the people that you see. In fact, uh, the other day I was listening to a head of one of the largest gun companies, not in the United States, in the world. It's located here in America. One of the largest gun companies, the president, was on a radio show, which shall go unnamed. <laughs> yeah, we don't and want to was, embarrass the guy. No, we don't want to embarrass anybody. But uh, they took questions from callers. And, you know, they were asking, the callers were asking some really simple questions. <laughs> like, uh, hey, uh, what about that finish on your shotgun? How's that going to hold up? And the poor guy, the president of one of the largest gun companies in the world, didn't he had to have a clue. Have a clue, because he didn't shoot guns. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a shooter. <laughs> it's like what I promise you, friends. The people that made your Ford, Chevrolet, or Dodge truck <laughs> all drive cars. The people that made those cars they all drive cars. If someone, I promise you, if somebody's head of a computer company, I guarantee you they got a PC at home. I promise you they do. Bet any amount of money that I don't have. Okay. I promise you the people that make those uh, chocolate uh, 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 cookies that you buy at the 7 I promise you that they have chocolate cookies at home. Guess what, friends? A lot of people running the gun companies, you hand them a gun and they say, well, where's the bullet come out? They're that ignorant. I cannot understand how, why. That's why we cannot get a lot of support from the industry. It's <laughs> and not only that, but the industry <laughs> is intimidated by the government. That's true. They, Some of them are flatly afraid that... Uh, they're if, afraid they're going to get flack from the government if they go maybe get public a with pool. a stance. That's really true. So, see, we cannot depend on the industry. We can depend on outside sources. If you can help sponsor our show, if you can do anything to help sponsor our program, join our support group. If you've got an ice cream stand, I don't care. You know, we'll, <laughs> we'll show your products here on the program. We'll put it on the air. Darn right we will. Friends, we need your help because we want to keep doing this. We feel like it has to be done. We do have a great show for you today. Uh, pick up this rifle here. This is a model of the Mark III Enfield, and it was made in India back in the 60s, and it is in 308 Winchester chambering. Uh, has a 12-round magazine. Oops, 12-round <laughs> magazine. <laughs> yeah, a 12-round magazine. And, you know, I didn't really know, uh, I know the Indians made lamps and stuff, and, and I know that there are some brilliant folks from India. We're talking India Indians. Uh, also, some very fine Indians live here in the United States. But I'm talking about the people over there with, that let the cows run loose in the streets, and they shut a factory down. If a cobra snake goes in there, don't kill a snake. My gosh, it might be somebody's <laughs> grandfather. Okay. I didn't know what all they make. I know this. They make pretty darn good tractors. My brother-in-law has a tractor made in India. They tore down an international harvester plant, moved it over to India, rebuilt it. They built a pretty nice tractor, and I think you're going to be impressed with this uh, Indian bolt-action rifle. Well, let's get another shooting show underway. We've got our target out here at 100 yards, and this is an old and not a real pretty gun. Uh, doesn't look very dainty, does it? Well, let's see if it'll shoot. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
friends, here it is. This is the IAI Model 5000 semi-automatic pistol, 1911 commander-sized all-forged pistol from the good folks there in Houston, Texas, IAI. Let's see it in action. Friends, here it is up close. This is the same gun you have seen on the program from Israel Arms International under the Gaul name, but what they want to do is make something a little easier to say uh, so we have a more Americanized name. You can see all the special features this gun has. The forward serrations on the slide, easy to see, uh, front sight that won't come out, easy to see three dot sights, the custom finger groove grip, the uh, beaver tail grip safety with uh, the extension here, uh, so you'll be sure and get a proper grip so the gun will fire. Uh, all kinds of extras we would not normally expect to see on a service type gun. A, a, an extended magazine release here, a lightweight trigger, uh, serrations on the trigger guard for those who prefer to shoot like so. Uh, it's really going to keep the gun from walking around there in your hand. You have an extended slide stop, an extended safety. Really terrific guns, all forging uh, from the good people at IAI in Houston, Texas. These are commander sized semi-automatic pistols with all the bells and whistles at some fantastic pricing. Friends, these guns are going to retail under $500. Let's see it in action. All 1911 parts will interchange. Absolutely superior function, uh, excellent accuracy for a service grade pistol, absolutely, from the good folks at IAI. I remember the Model 5000 is available in the great all-American caliber 45 ACP. It has the best price, it's the best product, all the bells and whistles is available in two-tone and blue. For information, give them a call, 1-800-599-2561. Again, 1-800-599-2561. And be sure and tell them that you saw it on our show. And you know, these days when worldwide violence and terror are on the rise, being prepared is the key for survival. Instinctive Shooting International can help using the Israeli technique. They're offering classes there in Houston for qualified civilians and law enforcement personnel. They can also send trainers throughout the United States. For information, give them a call, 1-800-599-2561. Instinctive Shooting International, again, 1-800-599-2561. Now, friends, looking, Heather is holding this Enfield rifle, and many of us remember them as being a British gun. Well, you know, India was ruled by uh, Great Britain for many years, and you can see, those of you who are familiar with the Enfield, see the standard features, the Mark III. We have the uh, protected front sights, and, of course, the bayonet lug, and then you have wood on both uh, sides of the barrel, top and bottom. You have some sights. I believe those go up to about 800 meters as far as how they're graduating in adjustment. We have a 12-round magazine and a standard uh, infield bolt uh, that we're used to seeing. The, the bolt handle turned down uh, like the English were fond of doing there. And you'll see on the top, uh, it allows for stripper clips to be used. And of course, the magazine release is right there inside the uh, trigger guard, right ahead of the trigger. And the uh, classic infield type stock. And this, it looks like it has an aluminum butt plate on it. Uh, not a very, uh, shall we say, <laughs> recoil-friendly butt plate, but the gun is heavy enough, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. Quite a package. These guns are, are coming back into the United States now. They were made in the 1960s in India, and I don't know why they chose to make a bolt-action rifle as late as the 60s, but uh, it, it's an impressive piece of work. Now, honest to friends, when uh, I saw this gun, I was over in fact, this gun belongs to our friends at Clark Custom Guns there in Princeton, Louisiana. Yes, indeed, the very same place that we're going to be having our fun gun weekend. And uh, you never can tell what you're going to find in there because they do a tremendous business. And literally, they stock at different times all kinds of things there in their shop. Well, I was in talking to Matt the other day, and I said, Matt, what kind of old infield is that? And he said, well, that's a, an Indian model. Uh, 
that was made in the 60s and it's in 308 Winchester. Well, my ears perked up right away because uh, typically the 303 British Enfields were not that accurate. They were serviceable old guns, but they weren't typically. Now, you may find one that, that was really accurate, but uh, the ones that we've seen, we've had one since the mid-50s uh, here on the farm, and it's not a terrifically accurate cartridge, uh, uh, in my opinion, at least in the guns we've seen it in. Uh, they shoot okay, uh, probably better than a lot of 94 Winchesters, but as far as real pinpoint accuracy, what we would expect in a target gun, they're not. So naturally, I didn't expect too much. He said, well, why don't you take it on out and show it? They've got a number of these guns. They're at Clark Custom Guns, uh, and they're retailing to our shooting show audience, if you'd like to have one, for $125. Now, wait a minute, friends. <laughs> a 308 Winchester bolt-action rifle, and they're, you know, they've been hauled around, been stored, but they're in pretty good condition, actually. The action is just as tight as can be. Uh, they have excellent triggers. It's, this gun has a three and a half pound trigger, a typical uh, two-stage trigger <clears throat> that we're used to seeing on military type guns. Uh, but what is most really in, impressive to me, like I said, the old gun is, maybe it doesn't look quite as refined as the British model. But let me say this, if this gun is an example of the machinery that the Indian people can make, Maybe we ought to look at some more of their stuff, too, because this gun shoots phenomenally well. I mean, it's all you can say. We'll take a look at the groups that shot in just, just a few minutes. But uh, one, when this design, of course, came from the uh, English and realized up until uh, Mahatma Gandhi there uh, uh, cut them loose that the uh, British had a huge say in what the English or the Indian people did, and uh, even after the British left India, they still continued on with the number because that's what they knew. I mean, they knew the uh, parts and equipment and, and machinery uh, like the English had because that's who had been there directing them for a while. So they continued on. Uh, I am curious why as late as the 60s they would still retain a bolt action rifle, but in this case, it's a 12 round magazine. And honestly, friends, I have not taken my caliper to it but the action seems a little bigger. Uh, it seems like it may be, I, I don't know that for sure, it feels a little bigger than the 303 British model. Honestly, the infield action has never been known for strength. It was known more for speed than strength. It was known for the rapid loading and unloading of uh, the cartridges there as far as working the bolt. They have very smooth bolts. These guns cock on closing and uh, most sporting rifles now cock on opening. And I honestly don't know what the big deal is. Um, to me, it works just as well either way. I don't know. But we're going to show you in comparison. We have an old Mauser rifle here. And <clears throat> this was my Blue Light Special. I bought this gun in 1968 at Kmart, Monroe, Louisiana. Paid $13 for it. And it's a 96 model Mauser. And hey, it's a pretty nice old gun. Would you believe that a lot of the industry people in when the 1968 Gun Control Act was enacted, which essentially shut down mail order on rifles and things. Uh, they uh, said at the time, and bear in mind that the 1968 Gun Control Act has many, many similarities to Adolf Hitler's Nazi Gun Control Act uh, of the mid-30s. And their idea was that, well, they thought that Lee Harvey Oswald had shot John Kennedy, and he had used a, what was probably a mail order rifle well, you know, friends, <laughs> uh, Lee Harvey Oswald, if he did it, he had access to all kinds of guns. He could have gotten a, in fact, the, the, we probably will never know the truth on that, but using the junk rifle that he had, the uh, Carcano Italian model, which uh, they weren't too good when they were brand new, and certainly uh, years later, uh, his feat of marksmanship is quite remarkable and of course we'll probably never know the truth on that i don't know if we'll ever know who shot john kennedy but anyway again guns were made as part of the scapegoat standard old anti-gun line anyway uh, uh these guns used to be able to be purchased through the mail in fact we got our old infield the one we have here in, in the mid 50s from sears robot catalog we thought this was great you could get carbines you could get m1 garands and you know in the mid 50s i just don't recall a crime wave because easy availability of guns 
had no effect at all on crime. It's a moral problem. It's not an equipment problem. It's a moral problem. But anyway, we'll compare the Mauser action to the British concept of how a bolt action should be made. And uh, uh, we'll just show you the differences. My friends, looking at the infield action, uh, let me take the bolt out. That'll probably be a little easier to show you. You can see on the bolt here, we have a bolt head that is uh, actually it's screwed into the bolt body here and here are your two major locking lugs. You have one this long one here and on the other side uh, you have a small one here that essentially that locks into the back of the uh, uh, receiver here. Now a lot of people think that a rear locking type action like this can never have, it have as good an accuracy rate or, or capability as a front locking a, a gun that the lugs lock in here. But I think we're going to see some exceptions to that. I know that Remington made a gun called a 788 that had rear locking lugs and some other companies, uh, Man Liquor and some other companies have made them in recent years and they shot really well. So I don't know how much of an issue that is, but these guns are very simple to clean. Of course, here's your trigger right here. Here's your safety that swings uh, forward and backwards. And your uh, magazine release is right here in the trigger guard to release the magazine. Very simple to clean, very strong, robust uh, action. Now then, uh, I'll show you something. Let me put the magazine back in it if I can. There we go. What happens when the bolt We'll get it screwed in here. The bolt pushes the bullet forward and it's in a position like this and realize that the uh, head of the bolt here stays in one position. This is your extractor right here and when it locks it turns over on the side so you actually have a two-piece type arrangement on the on the infield bolt and so what it actually does it just pushes just pushes the cartridge in and doesn't really lock around it just pushes it in place and holds it and your locking lugs are back here uh, the ejector is somewhat unique I don't know if you can see this or not see if we can the ejector is just a little spot there on the receiver and honestly friends you look at it you 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 say that'll never work but they do uh, with their unique system here and as compared of course it goes back together very simply just snaps back in place and I'll pull the trigger and put the hammer down now then, on the Mauser type action, the whole bolt turns from front to back here. Your extractor uh, actually turns, or the bolt turns within the extractor right here. And of course, these are also very simple guns. Your trigger mechanism here, the, the hammer releaser, or the uh, uh, striker release there. A whole different idea. The Mauser is more of a classic as we normally think, and this hole here on the side is to release any gas in case you get a case head failure. But it was just an entirely different uh, idea for making a gun. Uh, the British and the Germans have been at odds over a lot of things over the years, and this is another one of them. But in, in fairness, the Mauser has been uh, imitated many times, and tell you the truth, uh, I don't know anybody that's come back and made an action like the infield. But hey, uh, it's just different, different philosophy, different concept there but it does work. Stay tuned for more of The Shooting Show after these important messages. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
friends, here it is, great Georgia Arms ammunition. Notice these ballistic tip nozzle bullets in this Georgia Arms ammunition. You see, this is uh, equivalent to a box of 20 for only $7.95. Now, friends, that is a terrific price for essentially custom-loaded ammunition. Of course, for the plain full metal jacket, it is much less expensive. Here's another uh, tremendous bag of Georgia Arms ammunition, 7-millimeter Remington Magnum, 20 rounds, only $17.95, loaded with these premium Nosler ballistic tips. I tell you, this is custom ammunition at a discount price. Hey, what, friends? The good people at Georgia Arms do understand what's going on in this country. They understand how important our gun rights are, and they're supporting us on this project. The good news is you can get absolutely superior ammunition at discount prices, whether you have a handgun or a rifle. Uh, if you want to take that big hunt, uh, you can afford to practice with your rifle as well as use that same ammunition on the hunt because they are so reasonably priced. These are some of the nicest people we have ever met in this business, bar none, and they're down in beautiful Villa Rica, Georgia. So please, friends, if you would, you can get a free catalog with a free phone call. That's as good as the deal gets. A free a catalog, free phone call, 1-800-624-6861. Again, Georgia Arms, 1-800-624-6861. And please tell them you saw it here on our shooting show. Now, friends, I want to emphasize we need to store some ammunition in advance of when we might need it. And who the heck knows uh, what may be coming down the pike as far as regulation. Ammunition may get very difficult to buy at some point, even in the near future. We flatly don't know. But you can help yourself by buying this great Georgia Arms ammunition at the discount house prices they have. I don't see how they do it, but they do. You can get a free catalog with a free phone call. You remember our 41 Magnum Defense Special Load is now available from Georgia Arms. It makes your 41 Magnum much easier to shoot. It will be a much better defense load in the 41 Magnum than has been available in the past. Also, we want to remind you in the next month or two, we're going to have the 45 Double Action Colt. Uh, brass available and loaded ammunition. That's something new that's coming that the good folks at Georgia Arms have worked up here with us here at the program. So please, friends, give them a call, 1-800-624-6861, and please, friends, tell them you saw it on our program. Now, friends, we have several kinds of ammunition on hand today. We have some Chinese surplus. Uh, the Chinese actually made quite a few 308 rifles. They made uh, M14s. Uh, that they sent all around the world so they could take advantage of the United States service, uh, United States Army supply. They have equipped guerrilla forces all over the world with M14s, and they make a pretty nice uh, a 308 uh, around, actually. Uh, and some guns they shoot real well. It was not this gun's favorite, but still shot okay. In fact, with the Chinese 308 ammunition, uh, it shot about as well as a pretty good 94 Winchester. We also have some Remington. Uh, soft nose sporting ammunition. I wish we had some Georgia Arms ammunition because in 308 we don't have any today because I really would like to see what the gun would do. We've had such a superior look with, with accuracy on theirs, but we have some surplus uh, FNM and maybe that's uh, the folks FN, I don't know. I don't know where it's from, but it doesn't look all that great, but <clears throat> we'll show you how it shoots in just a minute. The thing about the infield, we'll do a little, a little shooting here. Uh, and the gun's heavy enough and muzzle heavy enough that it doesn't pound your shoulder so badly. Go ahead and, uh, here we go, and load the gun. We'll take several fairly rapid shots here and see how it looks. Our safety's off. So you can, uh, due to that action working uh, like it does, uh, you can shoot it pretty fast. And even though the sights on these things are pretty rudimentary, friends, but uh, you can get used to them. That's what the, uh, all the guns back in the military type rifles had pretty crude sights. Most of them did in the earlier parts of this century. Only in more recent times, on most military guns, have we really uh, gotten some pretty decent sights. But uh, these guns, I don't really know what they were supposed to shoot as far as group size. An old gun like this is a real battle rifle. It's a full-powered cartridge. The 308 Winchester runs a 150 grain bullet, about 2,700 feet per second. 
which is about 100 feet or so behind the great 30 alt 6 which was our military cartridge for many years. And the 308 will function in shorter actions uh, than the 30 alt 6 will. So you have a few advantages there for the 308 and certain types of guns. Probably the Indians made uh, this one in a magazine, the rimless cartridge, uh, like the 308, functions better than a rimmed 303, which is a pretty good trick getting the 303 to function anyway. Uh, it was, was probably a good uh, combination. But now then, and I, I've waited uh, to kind of kind of tell you what this thing did. We were down shooting this gun. <clears throat> we shot it over the last couple of days, and we had the three kinds of ammunition, the uh, uh, surplus FN, the uh, Chinese, and the Remington factory. <laughs> and I tell you what, friends, when I first started shooting it, I said, that's got to be a mistake. I mean, I'm shooting, realize, with open sights at 100 yards, but we've got a real good bench rest situation. We've got the little sure sight front uh, rest. We've got sandbags on the back, very calm, no wind. <clears throat> and you're not going to believe this. In fact, I, if I hadn't have done it, <laughs> I wouldn't believe it either. Let's take a closer look at our targets. Okay, friends, <clears throat> here it is. This is a three-shot group. Realize I'm shooting with open sights. My aiming point was, in fact, right here. And let me get this straight here. These are three shots. That's a half-inch group, friends. And the first one it shot, I said, surely not. I said, surely not. I have never seen a military rifle uh, that would shoot half-inch groups. And we went ahead and marked it. This is for the Remington. Uh, the uh, Remington soft point, we have 1.21 inches for three shots, which is, again, terrific accuracy for this infield. And with the Chinese ammunition, it didn't do quite as well, but this was actually about what I expected from the gun. We had a three-inch group here, 2.84 inches for three shots at 100 yards, my aim point, of course, here. So uh, I, you can adjust those front sights by tapping them over. But see, friends, if, if it had just shot this well, the three shots there in 1.21 inches, I would have been ecstatic. <clears throat> but I don't mind telling you, when it shot this, that's half inch group. Uh, I was uh, just astounded. I was stunned that the old gun would shoot that well. My friends, I started to tell a story a little earlier that I, I got uh, sidetracked there on. Some of the manufacturers here in the United States were actually in favor of the 1968 Gun Control Act because they felt like that the surplus guns coming into the U.S would take away business from their sporting runs for, for guns, for their expensive uh, bolt action or, or semi-automatic or whichever uh, rifles for, for sporting, uh, for hunting deer or whatever else. Well, they were wrong because uh, what we had when these guns came in at a very few dollars, you introduced a lot of people to shooting high-powered rifles that had never or could not afford to own high-powered rifles. They, they could actually afford it, and there was surplus ammunition they could afford to shoot. Well, you know what? The first thing that happened when someone goes out and, and starts shooting for the first time, they're going to say, you know, this is really fun. And I've got this old military gun, which I, I, I like, but I'd like to have a scope, and I'd like to have a better trigger, and I'd like to have custom-tailored ammunition. So what it did was get them into shooting. It got them started, and then they moved on up. Every time one of these goofy gun control situations goes in, does nothing to affect crime, does nothing at all, it just restricts our rights as citizens. Honestly, friends, <clears throat> I don't know if they'll all shoot this good or not. I don't know. Uh, over at Clark's the other day, I literally just, just took this one off the rack. I just grabbed one. Matt says, here, Johnny, take one. I just grabbed the first one I came to. This is number 50, if you'd like to have this one at Clark's. $125 for a 12 shot magazine, bolt action, 308 Winchester, that shoots better than any military rifle we've ever had on this show. Uh, three shot half inch groups at, that you can repeat at 100 yards, I think it's phenomenal. Uh, this is, to me, is a terrific buy because it, it would be a great uh, hunting rifle that darn sure could be used for home defense. Uh, for all kinds of sporting purposes. My gosh, friends, this thing shoots so good. <clears throat> you could go out and win matches with this thing. I don't know. I'd like to say, I don't know if the rest of them, I, I don't know. 
I know this is just one that, that I pulled off the rack, and uh, they're all supposed to shoot pretty darn well. So uh, needless to say, this target will be going with this gun, a half-inch group at, uh, at 100 yards with this infield. All I can say, if, if you're interested in owning this one or one of the other guns that they have, uh, call Clark Custom Guns at area 318-949-9884. Again, 318-949-9884. And this gun is number 50. It has 50 on the stock. And uh, it's a humdinger, friends. That's all I can say. It has astounding accuracy. And you know, another thing, too. These guns are literally pieces of history. And they're very functional. First thing you do when you get them, of course, is clean them. Get the cosmoline off, clean the barrel, get the cosmoline off the parts. Take our fluid film, it's the best thing I've ever seen uh, to clean guns with and preserve them. So uh, get you a can of our fluid film. Be the easiest thing I can, can imagine. And, and really enjoy shooting and owning one of these great military surplus rifles. It's a lot of fun. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. The shooting show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Friends, here it is, the greatest lubricant we have ever seen. It's good on guns, on leather, on farm equipment, on bicycle chains, on about anything you can imagine, electronic equipment. You can even use it at the end of the day as hand cleaner. It has lanolin in it. It's even good for your hands. You can get two large cans from us here at the show for only $19.95. Those are 11 and 3 quarter ounce cans from the shooting show, 327 Irvin Roland Road, Doubly, Louisiana. The zip code is 71024. Order today. Now, friends, here it is. This is the great 1919 Browning converted to semi-automatic from the good people at NWI. This is your chance to own a real piece of history. They're very collectible. They're also a lot of fun to own and shoot, and very reasonably priced, certainly for what you get. The 1919 Browning is from NWI, that phone number, area 503-429-5001. They also have the ammunition special still going on, 30 out 6 ammunition, only 18 cents a round surplus in the belt. So give them a call today. NWI for the great 1919 Browning conversion. Also remember they have the A6 conversion with the shoulder stock and the bipod. But these are tremendous pieces of, of history, also great shooters. So give them a call today, the 1919 Browning from NWI, uh, area 503-429-5001. And friends, we want to remind you, it's now available in 50 Browning caliber. Uh, it's just a larger version of the gun you're seeing here, the great Browning conversion to semi-automatic of the machine gun. Uh, you can get ammunition through uh, Tim at NWI at special prices, discount prices. Trust me, friends, these guns will not be available forever. You can make your favorite anti-gun person absolutely go out of their mind by purchasing one of these on your lawn. I promise you that. So give NWI a call today, area 503-429-5001, and please tell them you saw it on our show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you're enjoying our program. I'm here, of course, with my good friend, Leroy Scott, the good judge. Uh, I tell you what, you know, we need more good judges. Uh, you know, this woman, uh, this federal judge in Arkansas, has now thrown out the Paula Jones case. And you think they got to her? Judge, what do you think? Well, I'm not going to accuse any judge of having been gotten to, but... Uh, uh, that's going up on appeal anyhow. I mean, there's not going to be any. That's not going to be a district court decision. Well, the good news is, of course, friends, that Paula Jones, uh, we don't know what her outcome is going to be, but she has done this. That little lady from Arkansas has managed to roadblock 
or tie up the Clinton administration has given them some new things to worry about or some different things that at least has has slowed their progress on some of the other issues like like firearms wouldn't you agree well I don't know if they've slowed anything on that because it seems to me like they've got a half a dozen people working full time to try to stifle the rights of people to keep their arms well that's an awfully good point judge at least they've had slick himself somewhat tied up friends here we are today and it is a very difficult time. We need to ask for your help. And occasionally things really get difficult. They have over these years. And we're in another very difficult period. There's so much that needs to be done. You know, the reason that the anti-gun people work so hard against our project, against this program, is because they see us as a real threat. My gosh, we're spreading the truth. And you know, Judge, to a, to a lying, deceitful, freedom-robbing liberal, anti-gun person, you know, the truth is the deadliest thing they can face, isn't it? Well, that was a pretty broad statement, but I, th I would concur in it. <laughs> well, it's only true, friends. You know, this is our eighth year on the air, and many times, I, tell you, I, I really can't tell you how we're here, but we are. We need your help to continue. We have some things that we're working on uh, that we hope will make our project easier or at least expand our project where we can do some other things. But right now, we're not there. Please, if you can, if you can spare 5, 10, 25, 100, ever what you can spare. We wish that someone could come forward with, with a few thousand dollars and help this project because there's so much left to be done here on our pro-gun issue. Honestly, friends, this fight is not going away. It is not going to stop. It is not going away. We have to go on with this battle. Sir, uh, this week I had a call from one of our uh, viewers that's been reading. A, a Neil Knox had made some pretty severe charges against uh, Charlton Heston, actually, with the National Rifle Association. And I understand that in years past, say around 1968 actually, Charlton Heston was a leading proponent of the uh, 1968 Gun Control Act. Is that right? That was my understanding from what uh, Neil Knox said. Um, I had that, uh, that issue of Shotgun News, but my lovely wife has discarded relieved you, it. <laughs> relieved you of it, but still, you read it. And yes, I read it. You have an opinion on that? Uh, well, I, uh, I think anybody can change their mind. And uh, perhaps Charlton Heston has seen the error of his ways. He certainly has been a pretty good spokesman for the National Rifle Association so far, even though uh, I did not vote for him uh, for retention on the board. Well, uh, friends, the NRA is really in a, a, a state of flux right now. And we hope that they can work their deal out. We hope so, because you know what? We need the NRA. We need Gun Owners of America. We need the Second Amendment Foundation. And you know we need the shooting show on the air because this information that we give you folks about what's going on. Someone said well, a while back, said, well, John, they said, if you could just get politics off your show, it'd be a lot easier to get sponsors. Hey, friends, somebody has got to tell the political position. Someone has got to tell you the truth about what's going on with this legislation. Right now, we've got some correspondence that came from the government on stating their position on how they don't believe that we as citizens have rights to own guns. Now, wait a minute. This is what this is their attitude. So you know what what their staff of attorneys does. Their staff of of uh, uh, people in the bureau uh, up there in Washington. They're working to relieve us of our guns. We are so sorry about that uh, tragedy in Jonesboro, Arkansas. But as we said earlier in the show today, we had five people that were innocent that were brutally murdered. They weren't murdered by the gun. They were murdered by those kids. The gun was just a tool, just an, a, a machine that they used to murder those people. But you know what, friends? Last week, guns were used over 50,000 times to avert crime, to keep someone from being injured, to save someone's wife or mother from being raped, to protect the home, the safety of a family, to protect citizens all over this United States, over 50,000 thousand times. But you know, Judge, I see where the media forgot to mention that. 
Of course they forgot to mention it because that's not part of the media agenda. Well, friends, that's why we're here today is to tell the truth about why firearms are in American society and the benefits that we as gun owners have. Not just us, the rest of society, because we as gun owners who are shooters, who are responsible citizens, can protect our neighbors when the time comes. It's happened, it happens all the time. Friends, if you want to see us continue on television, this is no joke. If you want to see us continue with the shooting show, Please, if you can, please contribute to our program, if you can. You know, we have less than one hundredth of one percent of our viewing audience that actually does contribute to keeping us on there. That's not very many people out there paying, helping pay the freight for everyone watching. And please, friends, if you can, send to the shooting show, 327 Irvin Roland Road in Duberly, Louisiana. The zip code is 71024. If you can join our support group or help sponsor or you know someone that will help sponsor our program, put them in touch with us. Our phone number is 318-377-5189. This is a fight. Hey, you know, we've been here eight years, Judge. My goodness, this is in, we're in our eighth year, and <laughs> there have been so many times, week to week to week, I didn't know if we were going to have a show or not. I'd come to your office and Judge, I don't know. How many times have I been over and said that? I, I've lost count, lost. Johnny. <laughs> but it's true, friends, but we're still here. And we're making progress every week we can stay on. We're reaching more people with the truth about what this is about. You know, we're not ready to give up. My goodness. Please, whatever you can do, if you can help us stay on the air, please, please, we need your help. Uh, anything political, uh, anything uh, uh, that we need to know about on today's program, Judge? Well, you handed me all this stuff. Uh, a few minutes ago, this is uh, the official Justice Department position per one James S. Reynolds, Chief of the Terrorism and Violent Crime Section, in which he responds to an inquiry and, and logic, incidentally. He says, ultimately, however, it's the U.S. Supreme Court that decides what words mean, and that's true. That's true. But uh, uh, in the United States versus Miller, which he cites as, uh, as saying the Second Amendment does not confer on individual right to own firearms, uh, is not true. Uh, in the first place, in the United States versus Miller, the original defendant, Mr. Miller, did not appear in the Supreme Court, didn't argue it, uh, had given up his, his, his right, and the Supreme Court nevertheless said that absent some showing, and it was a sawed-off shotgun, which what it was, or a short barrel shotgun, I don't know it was sawed off, uh, absent some showing that this is a militia-type weapon, then there's no constitutional right to, to hold it. Well, that ignores the fact that over 50,000 short barrel shotguns were used in the trenches in World War II, in World War I uh, as militia-type weapons. Uh, but that was not presented to the Supreme Court because Mr. Didn't Miller, show up. Mr. Miller didn't show up. Um, the uh, several courts of appeal have done this, and I haven't researched all of these questions, but uh, I submit to you uh, the plain language. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. You know, Judge, question. Wait, let me break in here. The Declaration of Independence was not written so a legal staff had to disseminate it, was it? It was written so King George could understand it, wasn't it? Yeah, we don't know how much education King George had That's either. right. Good point. Good point. Probably, according to King George's actions, he wasn't too bright a fellow, period. But he understood the Declaration of Independence. Our Constitution was not written to be disseminated by a vast fleet of lobbyists and statisticians, it was meant to be understood by the people who lived here. Wasn't that right, Judge? And, and not necessarily by lawyers. And, well, I appreciate you saying that. The language is clear, friends. We're having people in the government that are resorting to downright subversion of language in order to change 
what these words mean. Are we going to let them get away with this, or can we tell the truth? What? Well, friends, we want to recognize our support group. We are extremely short on time. We want to talk about the good folks with Flying Horse Enterprises. They have the terrific artwork there on the web. You can find them at www.flyinghorse.net. We appreciate their support. Also, our good friends, Dennis and Jeannie Ritchie, with Custom Leather Work and Saddlery in Denham Springs, Louisiana. All kinds of leather work, tack repair, holster repair, you name it, they can do it. Their number is area 504-667-9225. And our good friend Dennis Crocker, who is a firearms trainer, gives all kinds of courses in basic pistol protection and concealed carry. Uh, he's authorized to go throughout South Carolina. His number is area 864-587-8722. And our friend Bruce Warren with BC Armory there in East Leroy, Michigan. Uh, Bruce does all sorts of neat conversions on handguns, semi-automatics, and revolvers. Uh, you can give him a call at area 616-729-5508. And our uh, folks at Camouflage Technologies, uh, they paint rifle stocks. You can find them on the uh, Internet at www.inland.net forward slash B-K-B-I-Z slash and their phone number is area 909-674-6488. And Holland Guard Service there in Meridian, Mississippi, our good friend Wayne Bearden. Uh, they do all kinds of security work around Meridian, Mississippi. You can give them a call at area 601-644-3950. Please remember our gospel show on Sunday mornings on G4 Channel 14 from 10 to 1030 Eastern Time. Remember our radio show on the American Freedom Network on GE1 Channel 7, 5.8 audio from noon until 2 o'clock on Sundays. Thanks for being with us, friends. We will see you on the next show.